The next concern I have, this dam was made in 1949. And having been in the construction business for a little bit in my own life, and an engineering student for part of my life, when you design something in concrete and working in areas of code requirements for concrete, etc., I'm sure the code has changed since 1949 to now 2009. So not knowing what the code is, it's got to be some sort of different today's in today's requirement for concrete. Let me read you about the stability of this dam. This is page 20 of the original FERC response of the application for this particular project. Um, bedrock at the dam site is well documented because of the excavation for the dam construction, cores, 1949. Thus provides information about geologic conditions at the site of the powerhouse and transmission alignment. Bedrock formations at the dam dip slightly upstream at 30 degrees, strike, and more or less parallel to the axis of the spillway. In my opinion is perpendicular, but anyway. The uppermost unit exposed, which constitutes the foundation for both spillway abutments, which is on either side, practically all of the spillway proper, that's the, the, the middle section here in the middle, and the upstream retraining wall is an andesite flow of 160 to 180 feet thick. This unit, or the rock unit, this flow is coarsely columnar, plately jointed, and the plates, which are cracks, often being only one or two inches in thickness. <clears throat> Weathering of the top and the site surface is quite uneven, is related to stress joints, shows sign of oxidation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Here's the line. Uh, general weathering through the joint planes penetrates several feet into the soil covered rock. Thus, much of the rock surface, though fairly sound, is loosened from the adjoining rock and was deemed unsuitable for the dam's foundation. Because of this, deep weathering and altered top of the andesite flow, all of which were revealed during excavation of the original alignment, the north dam abutment was angled downstream. This is the north part of the abutment. In other words, I'll read it again. The north dam abutment was angled downstream to its present position where the rock is considerably more sound. Okay, so what that means is the dam is not straight. They tried to make it straight, but this north side was unstable. So guess what they did? They did the old, let's make it in compression, move this side at an angle. And that's what exists today. In fact, you can see that in this line right here. This line and then this angles back is not a perpendicular straight line. If you get back there and sight this way, you're not, it's not a straight line. So they had to move this because of the unstable rock beneath it. That's the piece that you've got to get. That it wasn't good. They had to make a compensation. Now that's not cheap. You know, it's cheaper to be straight. So it you definitely was important. They had to spend money, go, let's move it over here to make it stable. And now you're going to go right through the heaviest part of this dam with an 11-foot hole to make that 9-foot pipe fit through unstable rock. This doesn't look, this doesn't sound good because this wasn't built for 2009 code of concrete and reinforcement for earthquake. Earthquake was not even a question back then. We're replacing all those bridges down I-5 for earthquake. Now they say, oh, well, we'll use this, this is written up, that we'll use what's called jet grouting at 4,000 PSI. We'll put, we'll pump grouting around that pipe and it's going to be all oh, so nice and nifty. Well, 4,000 PSI, you can take an Oregon, University of Oregon 250 pound lineman 
Now this is gonna be a little hard to visualize, but you can calculate this. Put them in a pair of stiletto heels where the heel is a quarter inch by quarter inch and hand him stand on one of those stiletto heels, he will create 4,000 pounds per square inch. That grout is only gonna go three or four inches into the crack. What about the crack on the other side? You gotta think out of the box. This is scary, this is really scary. Cause just think, if this goes, if there's an earthquake, and all that sediment comes downstream. It's gonna go into farmland, it's gonna go into ponds, it's gonna go into people's backyards. It's not gonna be just mud in their houses. It's gonna make, it's gonna make toxic mud that will sit and go through a process potentially of methylating to where you get methyl mercury, which is the toxic form. Now, this is gonna make Katrina look like a, a little kid's mud puddle. This would be a mess. Now, all I've sh I'm gonna now show you different locations to substantiate the instability of this rock flow. And it's not gonna be one or two. It's gonna really give you a good idea of how unstable this is.